Yo, what's up, y'all, and welcome back to Keep It Techie, where I teach you Linux and help you level up your tech skills. And today we're diving into one of the most essential Linux commands every beginner and even advanced user should master, and that's the ls command. It's like the Swiss army knife of file listing in Linux. And trust me, once you get the hang of it, your terminal game will go from zero to hero. So grab a notepad, open up your terminal, and let's keep it techie. All right, so the ls command is short for list. And as the name suggests, it lists the contents of a directory. And by default, if you type ls, it'll show you the files and folders in your current working directory. But that's just scratching the surface. I mean, the ls command has so many options and flags that let you customize what and how it displays from hidden files to detailed file info like permissions, size, and modification dates. I mean, think of it like this. LS is your flashlight when navigating the Linux file system. You can make it shine brighter, focus it, or even make it colorful. Let me show you guys what I mean. But first off, let me go down and show you guys the man page right fast. And they should have a man page for this. And I'm like I said, I'm going through kind of like a series of showing you guys all these basic commands again. I did this earlier on on my channel. A lot of those videos, they turned out pretty good, but I want to redo some of them because I know I could have done a better job explaining it. And now I'm in a better space to actually do that. So I figured I take the time to go down and do it. Man page, let's go down on man and LS, press enter, and they should have a man page for this, yeah. And so let me explain to you the purpose and the reason for the LS command. Here's the deal. Linux doesn't have a graphical file explorer like Windows or Mac OS by default. So when you're working in a terminal, what you need a way to see what's in a directory. And that's where the LS command shines. I mean, it helps you quickly see files and folders in any directory. You can also check for hidden files or system files. You can also look at file details like permissions, size, and owners. You can also sort files based on size, modification dates, and names. You can navigate and troubleshoot your system like a pro when it comes to using this command. And let's not forget, it's super useful for scripting and automating tasks. I mean, you'll be using it all the time once you start getting into using the command line on a daily basis. Now, this is where you wanna go to get all the flags, the options that you have available to you under the LS command. So I'm gonna just kinda scroll through them. I'm not gonna go through and read them. You guys can look at this at your leisure. I just wanna show you guys that they have a breakdown of everything, you know, dealing with the LS command here for you under the manual, unlike the CD command. So let's go down and quit that and clear the screen and let's go on and get our hands dirty. Hey y'all, Josh here from Keep It Techie. Real quick, let's talk about Rocky Linux. This distro is the real deal if you're looking for a solid enterprise ready Linux solution. It all started after Red Hat dropped CentOS and Gregory Kurtzer, the OG co-founder of CentOS, brought us Rocky Linux as a tribute to his late friend, Rocky McGough. This is community driven, open source software at its finest, and it's already making waves. Rocky Linux 8.10 is out now, giving you that enterprise grade stability without all the Red Hat licensing headaches. So whether you're running a home lab or a full on data center, Rocky's got your back. So if you want to keep it open source and keep your data secure, check out Rocky Linux. The link's down in the description of the video. It's built by the community, for the community, and it's here to stay. Stay techie, y'all. And what I want to do is go to a directory where I know a lot of files are, and we're going to go to our e directory. This is where a lot of configuration files are stored. So basic usage of the ls command is basically running ls. So that's with no options or anything. So ls, press enter, and that'll list out everything in that directory. Now. This is just a simple list of the files and directories. And you can tell the files from the directories by the color. The blue is a directory 
the white is a file and I can kind of tell because I know the extensions. You just look at the extensions. So a conf is a configuration file and most of these folders, they don't have extensions on them. So you'll see, you know, they don't have an extension on them. Now, some of them do like, you could tell they're like daemon directories or something like that. You'll see that dash or dot D or your cron dot D, you know, that's folders that you know, hold configuration files for like system services and things like that. But you could basically tell, you know, the difference between your files and folders. But let's say you can't. And then also this normal ls command also doesn't show you all the files that are here. They don't show you the hidden files. So it is, it's actually more files in this directory. We just cannot see them right now by just running ls normally. So in order to show the hidden files as well, because in Linux, the way you create hidden files is by putting a period in front of it. So like, for instance, this folder, if it had a period in front of it, it'll be hidden. You wouldn't be able to see it. That's the way hidden files show up here. Unlike in Windows where it's just a hidden folder, you won't be able to see it at all. But you can still see it in here. All you have to do is type an option. That option is ls and then dash a and press enter and you'll be able to see all your hidden files. And if we scroll up to the top, because that's where your hidden files are gonna be, you'll see the hidden files. So we got our dot updated and dot password and dot Java. So those are hidden, that's a hidden folder right there to Java. And there's a hidden file and a hidden file right there. And you can scroll back up here to the top and you'll see that it wasn't because it had those dots in front of it. So that those are hidden files, definitely. Now, let's say you wanna look at more information of these files and let's go into another folder. Let's go into our Nginx directory. So let's go CD and I call it Nginx, but it's Nginx. I, I call it that. I got so used to calling it that a long time ago. And so I say it every now and then, but Nginx or Nginx, the web server. So anyway, let's say you wanna look at more information. This is the long format. I wanna show you guys this option as well. The long format is perfect for understanding file details, you know, basically at a glance. So if we type dash L and press enter, that'll show you the long format of the actual files. And let me break all this down for you. It doesn't have a header in here, but I can break it down for you. So the beginning right here, this is a breakdown of the permissions. Now the first character right in here, that is whether it's a directory or a file. And as you can see, all the directories, the ones that are blue have a D in front of them. And the ones that are files have a dash in front of them. So that will designate if it's a directory or a file. And then everything else after that is permissions. And I could break it out for you, but it's three groups. The first group is the owner of the file. The second group is the group of the file. And the third group is the world permissions of the file. So it's just three different groups. So the owner, as you can see for this file right here, or folder conf.d, it's owned by root. And this is the group that owns it as well. The owner has read, write, execute, and the group has read and execute, which is right here, root. And then the world has read and execute. So that's a quick breakdown of it. I don't wanna go too deep. You know what I'm saying? I'll do a video talking about permissions and we can go through all of that. Just want to quickly go through it, but that's basically the permissions. I can't remember what this is off the top of my head, but this is the user. This is the group. This is the size. This is the date modified. So as you can see, you got a lot more, you know, details of the actual file. Now, let's say you want to look at certain things in a human readable format when it comes to sizes because this is our sizes right here let's say you want to look at it in a better format that's easier to read there is the h option and it might not work too well because these files are small i wish i had some bigger files but if you type ls dash lh that'll put it the sizes at least in a human readable form so if we press enter there you'll see it a little bit better so it's 4k instead of it being broken out in bits because that's the way it breaks it out you know by default if you put that h there it'll break it out depending on whatever size it is it'll break it out like if it's if this file was i don't know 400 megabytes it won't have it in bits it'll put it in megabytes or it won't have it in kilobytes it'll put it in megabytes you know to make it in a human readable you know form so you can easily see and understand the size of the actual file or folder that you're looking at now let me show you guys how to sort because that's one thing you can do if you look at the sizes of these things let's say you want to sort these by the actual size then there's another option you could put in here you can go ls dash l and then type the s after it and this will sort by size and then press enter 
And as you can see, it'll put it in by size. And let's do it in human readable form so you guys can see it a little better. Yeah, and it's not really gonna change because I forgot it's basically gonna show as 4K, 4K blocks. You know what I'm saying? Because of the actual, the way Linux looks at everything as a file, you know, essentially. Until we get down to big stuff, you know, big files or whatever. Now, one other thing you can sort by is modification date. So I wish I had some bigger files so you guys can see, you know, the difference. But let me show you guys how to at least sort by the modification time. So you can type ls dash l and t that'll sort by the time so as you can see we got some may in here 2024 and we got some november of this year so let's go down and press enter to put the november you know first and then may and so it basically sorted it by the time the modification time and you can always combine this stuff like i said where you could put the h in there if you want to see the human readable format as far as the sizes and all that stuff and there you have it five powerful ways to use ls you can mix and match flags to customize your output so play around with it and you'll see how flexible it is all right so that wraps up today's video about the ls command hopefully you see just how essential this command is for navigating linux like a pro so whether you're a beginner or someone sharpening your skills mastering the ls command will make your linux journey a whole lot smoother so don't forget to like the video and if you found this helpful go down and hit that subscribe button for more linux tips tricks and tutorials and as always if you got questions go down and drop them in the comments down below i love hearing from you guys stay safe stay techy and i'll see you guys in the next one peace yo what's up y'all listen if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move let me tell you tech is where it's at i don't care where you coming from whether you've got a degree a ged or just pure hustle there's room for you in this game you see tech is more than just keyboards and code it's solving problems creating opportunities and building the future you already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start it cares where you're willing to go you can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's going to take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is going to pass anyway, so why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career. It's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.